Hey everyone, this is Truveen and in this session we will be talking about directory structure overview for Canvas app source code files. In my earlier session, we have talked about how we can get source code files from PowerApps Canvas app. Now, let's talk about its directory structure in detail over here. So, let's get started. Here, I have opened my Visual Studio code and the directory structure is opened for the extracted file from PowerApps Canvas app. If you don't know how to extract the files from the Canvas app, the link is down below in the description box. Visit my earlier video and check out the entire procedure in detail over there. Once you follow that procedure, this type of directory structure is appear to you in Visual Studio code. Now, let me talk about each folder in detail over here. So whenever you open the entire source code file into Visual Studio code, it will show you this kind of directory structure. The first folder is asset, then connection, data sources, entropy, packages, source, then different type of manifest.json files. Now what are the use of this file? Let's talk about that in detail. So the first folder is asset folder. When you expand in that, you will able to see logo.jpg file and resources.json file. So basically, asset folder is something which is responsible for the app's logo as well as the resources that are being used into the app. So whenever you click on logo.jpg, it will show the logo that is being used and resources.json will show if any resources is being used in your app. Then there is a second folder called connection. If your app has used any of the connection, data source connection, then it will show you over here. So connection.json file is responsible for that thing. Then the third folder is data sources. The data sources directory is responsible for all the data sources used by app. Whenever you open, click on any of this JSON file, it will show you the information about that thing in detail over here. Now there is one more directory here that is called entropy. There are two files within the entropy folder. One is entropy.json and checksum.json. Now this entropy.json file is something which store all the bits of information that is being used in your canvas app and the information is used to round trip the app. So here you can see that whatever the control that are being used over here, its information with its ID is being stored over here, right? Now, second file is checksum.json. Now, there is a file called checksum.json. Now, checksum.json file stores the checksum of original files from the MSF. This is internally used to detect the differences to ensure that we are round tripping correctly. Now, there is one more folder called packages. Now, this packages folder is something which is similar like NuGet package manager. Basically, it downloads the copy of all the components and controls or API definitions that we have used in our app. So, it is showing like this. Then, there is folder called source. Under source, the first directory is component. Now, this component is something which is responsible if you have used any component in your app, it will show that information to you over here. Then, there is another directory called editor state under source folder. Now, under editor state, the first file that is used as app.editorState.json. Now, this file is something which shows all the information about the app. Now, there are few files called editor state.json. Now this editor state.json file are created by each individual screen. So let's say in your app you have five different screen then you will be able to see five editor state.json file. Now this shows the row control of the json file over here. Now similar like editor state you are able to see different types of pa.yaml files over here. 
So let's say for each individual screen, you are able to see the YAML file. Now, this PA.YAML file is something which extract the formula from the above JSON file and it will show you all the formulas to you over here. We will talk about different YAML formula over here in the later part of this session. Right? So that is another folder, source folder and different types of YAML file. Then there is a folder called theme.json which shows the theme information that is being used in your app. Then there is one more file called canvas manifest.json. It is showing the information about the published app for your canvas app. Then there is one more file called component references.json. If any components used, display it here. Otherwise, it will show as blank. And at last, we have control template.json. Now, this control template.json file is something which shows the information about all the base classes that are used in the app. So let's say in your app, if you have used attachment control or let's say button control, so all the base classes information is being shown into this particular file, right? So this is the overall idea of for the directory structure that we have extracted from the MSF file. Now let's talk about the YAML syntax overview over here how we can change the different thing in the formula over here. Now let's talk about the YAML syntax overview and the different formula that are used for different screen in the canvas app. So let's get started over that part. So first of all you need to expand the source folder and as I mentioned you that you need to edit from the pa.yaml file. Now the first file in the over here you can see as app.pa.yaml so basically it will show you apps on start information so if you have applied any code you are on app start it will show that code to you over here then in your app if you have different screen that screen are showing as pa.yaml file so in my canvas app I have a screen called business information so I am using so I am able to see businessinformation.pa.yaml file on my screen over here. Now let's talk about the different formula that are being used in our YAML file. In any of your YAML file, the formula is starting with is equal to thing. So let's say for an example, there is a property called field. So field, then colon, then space then is equal to and then whatever the formula is there it is being showing to you over here one more important thing single line formula can be represented by is equal to but in your yaml code formula if there is use of any colon or any pound key then it is not used as a single line formula for that we need to use a syntax like this for that first of all the property then colon then space then you need to use pipeline and dash then in the second line you need to use is equal to and then whatever the text property is that you need to provide that now here you can see that in my text there is a colon and that's why it is not supporting that as a single line formula to you over here so make sure about that thing in here third important thing about the yaml file is that here the first syntax is being showing like this like whatever the control name that is presented in your app that name is being showing here then there is a keyword called as and after that control type is being showing over here so my control type is label and its id is label app one underscore two and it is separated with the as keyword right so this is another thing now all the properties are being showing like this to you over here. So this is the overall idea about the code files that are used for Power Apps Canvas app. Hope this video helps you. If you have any question, you can add your question in the comment section.